Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hamda. Hamda, I just got my uh, Keith and the Girl shirts in the mail. Keithandthegirl.com slash gear, G-E-A-R, G-E-A-R. And make sure you uh, you have yours in time for July 4th, Keith and the Girl Day, where you go out and a Keith and the Girl listener recognizes uh, your, your little outfit or your coffee cup or what have you. And they go, oh, shit, we have something in common. Let's get married. You'd be surprised. It's fun every year. I got the wave punchers and I also got the catfish email picture. <laughs> I and, love that one. And I'm thinking my mom, she's an assisted living, really doesn't know what's going on. But I still you still want to say hi. You still want the, her to remember uh, us, the kids, of course. So I'm going to give her the catfish shirt. And as a bonus, my dad, who I actually catfished, will uh, will get to see that when he visits it. And so everybody wins. It's, if everybody's uh, me and my mom. <laughs> Isn't that the greatest idea? It, it is the greatest idea. I love little symbols and things that look like this looks like, oh, there's a cat in an email and that's catfish and the cat is fishing. So it's so it's for the general public. It's a catfishing email. But for us, like for anyone who listens to Keith and the girl who knows Keith's story about catfishing his dad, it's so much fun that that could just be a regular thing. And for those in the know, it's like, I, I see you. Yeah. So <laughs> keithandthegirl.com slash gear, G-E-A-R. You'll see everything there. Make sure you order now in time to uh, get shipping in time. And if I'm confusing you, what do I mean by catfishing my dad? Keithandthegirl.com slash dad, D-A-D. If I say so myself, it'll blow your fucking mind. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody, and everybody, and everybody in the world. <laughs> I'm just excited about uh, today's guest. I am too. In fact, I am taking over this introduction. I'm so excited. I know okay. that you usually do it, but okay. You all know the troubadour who pissed off the troubadour in Gilmore Girls and then later <laughs> came back to pick up, to piss off Dosi. Okay. You know... <laughs> Gus's neighbor in one of my favorite shows of all time, Love. You know the guidance counselor in the most magical story of going to school, Freaks and Geeks. Oh, he's the naked trucker. Dave Gruber Allen. Oh, my goodness. So happy that you're here. Hey, Dave. I'm, I am so happy to be here, Hemda and Keith. And I got to say, that is the most lovely intro. Uh, <laughs> and you hit... You hit about five decades of stuff, so that's pretty great. Thanks this, for that. This is how long you've been in my life. I only watch about five shows, and you're in four of them. So we have to start petitioning yeah. for you to be in Grace and Frankie because it's it's your obvious next step in my life. Oh, my gosh. Is this still on? I don't know that show. So if it's still on, tell them I'm available. All right. We'll make it happen. Welcome to the show. And tell them I can be local hire. Because you know about that, right? Where they're always, oh, they have to be local hire. I'm local hire. I'll, I'll move to wherever shows being shot. I'm in. Right. <laughs> Show me an apartment. Done. Uh, before uh, Kenda does go through her list of uh, how much she loves you, and I'm a I'm a big fan of well as well, Mr. Show, <laughs> etc. Uh, I do want to ask you about the name, of course, Dave Gruber Allen. And looking things up, because I'd rather know than uh, ask you an obvious dumb question. But I'm finding out that you had the nickname Groover. Later, you added it to your name as Gruber, as if Groover makes any sense. Oh, uh, why would <laughs> what, what did the nickname Groover mean in the first place when you were a kid? Keith, that is, you know what? You did some deep dive there. That's pretty good. Cause that's it's about your name. As close, and I'm not I'm not <laughs> kidding, though, but that's about as close as anybody's gotten to sort of where it came from. And it was a, a guy in high school who would call. This is a, about the time of Facing Geeks, by the way, a couple of years before, late 70s. And he would walk down the halls greeting people. His name is Jim. Super cool guy. Um, he would greet people saying, hey, Groover, with a B. What's up, Groover? How's it grooving? How you doing? Like and it was kind of cool because he wasn't. Yeah. Or you or you just got the groove. He was he was both hippie and stoner and gearhead and he was everything he was a really cool guy jim and he would just say what's up groover so i sort of co-opted that expression thinking i can be cool like him by using that expression right 
Right. And uh, pe- people were always like, I'm sorry, what was that? I said, <laughs> you know, Groover, Groove on, man. And they're like, I don't, is it Groover? What are you saying? And so it got, it got kind of mangled like that. And then because there's other Dave Allen in the world of everything, show business included, uh, I needed a, another name. Because there's other Dave Allen's, there's a famous Irish comedian, Dave Allen, and there's other SAG after members who are Dave Allen. So I just added Gruber because that's what everybody called me. So, and Gruber as a middle name, it, you know, when you read it, is in parentheses. Uh, what makes you decide right. parentheses as opposed to quotes or nothing? Uh, thank you for asking. You asked the great questions. The best introduction I've ever had, and the best questions <laughs> I've ever had, we're off well, to a great you. start, right? <laughs> for real. Um. I can't remember, uh, Bud Overham, it's in Burbank. When I first moved to Burbank, the city manager there, this is such a weird specific thing, but was like Ronald Bud Overham. And they would put his name in parenthesis, right? Mm-hmm. And I just thought, that's kind of neat. It's parenthetical. Like, if you know him, I mean, if you don't know him, you refer to him as city manager, Burbank city manager, Mr. Overham, right? Or, you know, uh, manager Overham. But if you knew him, you got to call him Bud. So I just thought that was kind of, and he's kind of a famous guy. His name is on buildings now in Burbank, California. But uh, it came from that. Like I saw it and it just looked different than, you know, Henry, Harry Morgan, or, you know what I mean? Like that. I get it. I I get it because I remember learning that the parentheses were sort of like a side note. And as soon as I learned that, I started, I stopped reading the stuff inside the parentheses. So the people who (laughs) were reading the stuff inside the parentheses were closer to the work. Therefore, if you put your middle name in parentheses, the people who are not skipping parentheses anymore, because that's a stupid thing to do, are warmer to your name. I figured it out. This makes so much sense to me. Do what do your friends call you, Dave or Gruber? Uh, a little bit of both. All my showbiz friends usually go Gruber. That's their default. And then, you know, people in my world up here in Utah or people out, you know, they might say Dave. And so, oh, and that brings up a point, y'all, because if they say, hey, Gruber, then I know, oh, they saw me on TV or they, you know, saw me do some stage stuff in L.A. or, or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? It's kind right. of that's an easy one. Like, hey, Gruber. Oh, OK, got it. And oh, well, this is, like, is eh, you know, this this is a conundrum to me because I want to be your showbiz friend and your real friend. So I'm going to have to call you Dave <laughs> Gruber as if that's like one sort of Southern name, like Betsy Ann and stuff like that. So Dave Gruber, <laughs> thank you for being here uh, in special parentheses, friends. If I don't know. Well, thank you. I was just going to say, if I, I don't know somebody, if I don't know somebody, I want them to call me Kevin. <laughs> and it's where that's coming from, you know, what were you going to say? That's a good one uh, on the topic of names, because I did my research too. Uh, Shemda is a great name and I didn't know where it came from. Tell me if this is true, according to the Internet. So we don't know if it's true or not. It can mean a bunch of things. Desire, treasure, precious and lust. I thought was like, hello, is that <laughs> accurate? Uh, I don't know if I've heard the lust part, but uh, it might it might come from that desire version of the okay. name. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. how I got my club name when I was younger and I was going to clubs. It was, you know, dark and loud and no one's going to understand Hemda. And I can't sit there while we're like, Hemda, Hemda. So I right. opted okay. in for Desiree to be my club name. I didn't want it oh, to be. Oh, I love it. Thank you. I didn't want it to be my American name because I don't want to be called Desiree, because to me at the time, it was just so associated with like the darkness. My parents don't know. So it was my alter ego. Mm. Yeah, so, I, that's uh, how I got to my name. Keith, your turn. My club name. No, is, I, and I looked up forced. Keith too. And tell me if it's accurate, Keith. Tell me yeah. if this is right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it contains uh, an East Lothian and Britonic element. That's getting pretty specific. Well, it has to, to do with up. woods or forest. Is that yeah. accurate? That's right. That was my name, Forest. Dang. Yeah. I love wow. it. <laughs> we've we've never deep dived into like all of our names. It's honestly usually about me and the mispronunciation. In fact, I know the people listening, when people call me on the show Kemda, they're like, oh, this guy, this girl, she doesn't know the the show at all, calling her Kemda. When they say Kemda, <laughs> they know that there's a certain warmth and there's a whole like degree of did you do your homework? So 
I think you I got to well. look up. I got to I feel bad. I didn't look up Dave. I just had a feeling the more exotic names are lost in design. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> Dave uh, means oh. uh, it's short for David and it means like beloved or anointed or something to do with the Bible. So oh, that's yeah. where that's at. And I have a uh, quick wood. other question. If you, if, since we're getting specific, mm -hmm. uh, Keith, you mentioned. Oh, wait, can I ask a two part question? I'm going to allow first it. Time, first time caller, two part okay. question. <laughs> OK, go ahead. Um, has, have you spoken with any British folks on your show? And do they call you Keith with an F? I'm so used to that people, some people can't pronounce TH that I don't, yeah. I barely notice it anymore. In fact, one of my uh, stepkids' friends kept saying Keith, and I didn't even notice until she said his name's Keith. And then I'm debating, do I jump <laughs> in and say some people can't say it? It's okay. Plus, it really gives him street cred because Keith is that, you know, that thing that you get from the ganj. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Speaking of. It just occurred to me in this in this singular moment, it just occurred to me that Kiefer Sutherland, maybe keep, people call him Keith, right? Uh, but if you're a British person calling him Keith, and like, you know who came up the other day was Pulp and Blur and Oasis. Are you in? Are you down with me? I hear you. you are so high. Tell me yeah. you're not high. That was the, <laughs> no, no, that was the topic. And so I was thinking, like, if you guys had one of the guys from Pulp, or blur on your show, they might go Hemda and maybe they get it right. And then they go, and Keith, I really enjoy your show, mate. I think would, that'd be great. You should try try it out sometime. It would be a nice change of pace. I almost won it for Hemda. I want the <laughs> rules to switch. But so far, I'm I'm winning. Let's put it that way. Oh, and then this a quick was... question, Keith, on your mom's name. What's your mom's name? Who you said is in assisted living? Is that right? What's her name? Uh, Catherine. Catherine with a K or a C? K. K. I love Catherine because that's why I came up to Utah was to be with my mom and my dad when they both had their issues. So just so you know, uh, I love people's moms. And I they, probably love yours too. So do you mind if I ask when you say issues related to all time or completely different? Uh, negative. Not, not all time. It was uh, my mom had a stroke and then spent a lot of time in skilled nursing facility and assisted living. Right. And my dad took care of her every single day. Uh, you know, his vow when he when they got married was like, hey, listen, I'm yours for the rest of the rest of the time. And so he was there every single day until he had issues. And so I came up to kind of, you know, help out. But he, he was there. My dad was there to Mavis. My mom's name is Mavis. So there you go. Oh, that means um, typewriter. <laughs> to Mavis Beacon, it means, yeah, typewriter <laughs> instructor, a but, fake uh, typewriter uh, instructor at that. Can they still communicate? My mom can't. Uh, my mom can't communicate. Um, does she enjoy music, though? My parents have left us, but uh, it's hard. Does to your tell. mom listen to music? And does she respond to music? It's hard to tell. OK, well, God bless your mom. God bless Catherine. Fingers crossed. I'll, I'll right. tell her. I, I, I won't have much to report back, but thank you. I'll tell her. No, no. Just tell her Gruber's, Gruber will say a prayer for her. And uh, and I love moms. So there you go. Wouldn't it be funny? She goes, you mean Groover? My mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that guy. <laughs> well, speaking of, um, you play a lot of um, hippies, right? You play a lot of like very groovy in that time area era, um, no matter what time you're playing. Um, does this translate into your life slash what's your drug history? Uh -huh, very nice. Let me, can I go backwards to that question and start at the front and then work my way to, towards where you were trying to out me and, as a user? And he just starts doing all the drugs throughout his life. He's like, let me start with this. Exactly. I don't know. I'll go, I'll go front to back on that one. Um, and I'll, I'll try and rein it in. When I first moved to L.A., right, I was working in special education in junior high. And uh, all the students would say, this is early 80s, by the way. And all the students would say, hey, Mr. Allen, are you a hippie? And I go, well, no. And I would I would use that as a uh, learning moment to say, do your math. I was born in 58, so I couldn't be a hippie. But I love the hippies. I embrace all that the hippies were about and the social change and the blah, blah, blah. So I have lived my life as a hippie without kind of really being one, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and Hemda, to, to sort of address your question, on my tax, on my tax, uh, forms my you know my tax whatever i put hippie? performer 
No, I do not. Funny <laughs> question, Keith, but not so. I put performer slash writer. And they go, well, why don't you just put actor? And I go, because I'm not acting. Anytime you see Gruber on TV, <laughs> it's kind of just Gruber. You see what I mean? So from Troubadour to Naked Trucker, a little less so, but from Troubadour to uh, to Love, to Freaks and Geeks, to uh, any other guest. You said Arrested Deve- or not Arrested Development. Mr. What was Show. One that you mentioned, Keith? Mr. Mr. Show. Mr. Show. That character's name, just so you know, in the IMDb or whatever, was Hippie. Right. In fact, it went. I think it went from hippie cameraman to hippie. But also in, a, in an episode of Arrested Development, um, there I was hippie number three, and then IMDb just said, "Just call him hippie." You know, it's like <laughs> smiley right, all face. The, with, all uh, these titles are starting to be an insult. Can we just make him hippie number one? <laughs> yeah, man. I think I was hippie one in Smiley Face that movie. So with okay. Anna Ferris. So, and I don't mind it at all. That's a casting thing that I'm super happy about. My drug use was limited. Um, and in fact, I can tell you that like uh, marijuana in the old days, it was like it was all kind of dirty ditch weed anyway. And I would get super tired and super stoned, bro. You know, and so I can't I, to, to be honest, y'all, I can't name the last time I did it. It, was, it would have been decades ago when I smoked any pot. So there you go. I smoked cigarettes, which is a horrible drug to use. I don't encourage anybody to do it. And I drink once in a while. So that's oh, my drug right. history. And and so you never tried the other stuff, uh, uh, Negative. mushrooms, acid, molly. No. Nothing. Okay. Negative. Well, they do have you smoking from bongs a lot in your, um, like, in, in love as the neighbor, as Gus's neighbor. Uh, yeah. There's, there's bong hits, yes? Absolutely. There's bong hits in there. And you remember, uh, do you ever see United States of Tara, that one? I know what oh, you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, I played like stoner guy on the couch there and it was all fake weed, which is kind of just as bad as if it was real, you know, cause they got to use, they use substitute herbal stuff and they crush it up and whatnot. But I just remember going and I smoke a lot. So it's not like, I don't know how to pull smoke into my lungs and blow it out, but it's like, Oh my God, this is really a drag. Do you, wow. ever feel you have yeah. to report that to your doctor? Uh, I reported to SAG, uh, what do you call it? Disaster uh, bump pay. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'll say, so you sort of live that hippie lifestyle you um, that you mentioned. Very political, very political. Yeah, but also, you know, a lot of actors are sort of seen like that artist slash hippie, you know, were very um, anti the norm and then they become rich and famous and it's as if that part (laughs) never existed. Um, you were with a lot of people at the start of their career who are now megastars. Do you see that happening that, oh, I thought we were all, you know, kind of not stoners necessarily without the drugs, like the easygoing artists. Are you seeing that? And how are you managing to stay as hippie as you are? Uh, (laughs) I would say this, uh, I can, I can point to the good examples because they're the people that I love and they're my friends and, you know, brothers from another's, another's mothers, um, the people who were cool from the get go, who maintained their cool and are now rich and famous and cool. I do you want two names? I'll just throw them out there. If you want sure. them. I'd sure. like 10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, the list is seriously, the list is endless because that's what it's all about. And then I'm going to get to a point about how I negotiated, uh, not being rich and famous, but being super happy. Um, and that is uh, like people like Paul Feig, right, is the same guy as he was when we saw him at the Variety Arts Center downtown L.A. in 1980s doing stand up with a weird crew cut and stuff. You know what I mean? He is the same guy as funny and cool and lovable and everything you want. Now he wears three piece suits and carries a cane and drinks fancy British, you know. Oh, we're having Tim's number number one cup at the uh, Wimbledon. You know, he's very British now. But he hasn't changed at all. And Steve Higgins, right? No bigger name than that. It's like he's the same guy. You know, he might, I don't know, he might uh, what, iron his shirt more or he might iron his khaki <laughs> pants more. Well, what you about what when saying? you see got, you when know. you see the people who you've worked with? And I guess in thinking about um, who you've been working with, they haven't been as much negatively in the news. But um, right. when, when you see the negativity, does it make sense to you? Like, oh, yeah, they... They didn't start off in this um, mind space. They're not there now. 
I'm not. Can you can you sort of try that in a different way? Because I really want to answer the question. I'm just not sure what you're looking for. So. Um. Okay. So so you're saying people have remained who they are. Have you noticed anybody change because of this industry? You know what? How about this? And and I'm I'm trying to be honest. And we'll like, take two names. My... Who became an <laughs> asshole? Just two names. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's here's the thing. I got to tell you that my circle of friends that started in 85 when I moved to LA, right. And started, we started doing comedy in Des Moines, Iowa, but, um, and that was with the Higgins, right. Dave, uh, Dave Higgins and Steve Higgins and Al Higgins now who's, who's really made great strides. So, um, I would say this because my circle of friends and people I associate with is pretty tight and I did not become rich and famous. I don't know the assholes. I only know cool people. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how did you stay this way? You said you're going to give us the secret to how not to be rich, but to be happy. Uh, to not to not to be rich is make sure you don't uh, really work hard at your craft. Right. <laughs> I, I'm kind of funny, but serious. It's like, yeah, man, there's people who focus on I'm going to get this audition. I'm going to seek out this thing. I'm going to get a different manager. I'm going to get different headshots. I just never did that. So what I'm saying is that will leave you behind in certain places like, yeah, you might have had a chance of that if you had just auditioned for it. You might have had a chance if you just answered that email, right? So there's that. But guess what? All my friends are still intact. I love them all. And they have looked out for me. You know, it's weird, Hemda, when you went down that list and then including uh, the Mr. Show uh, that Keith mentioned, it's like uh, almost every single gig I've had was, and here's the two-part sort of trick to it, was because of a friend. So you could say, is it cronyism? Absolutely. But oftentimes it was like the crony aspect was Gruber's in for the audition. And then guess what? Oh, we need a hippie uh, guidance counselor on Freaks and Geeks. I auditioned for that role for Allison Jones and Paul and the producers, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to go in for the audition. They kind of wrote it with Gruber in mind, but it wasn't a guarantee. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. all that privilege all that uh, fortune, uh, good fortune of having friends who look out for you, right, pays off. And then hopefully I just deliver the goods. There are times when I did not deliver the goods, but what are you going to do? They still hired me and, you know, the check's cleared. So thank you, people. You got me the gig. <laughs> you ever audition and then just point to your face and go, uh, I'll see you soon. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I tell you one time I auditioned where, and this one, use your imagination. Ready? It's imagination time with Gruber. <laughs> uh, Modern Family was was not a crony gig because I didn't, I knew nobody on it. But the casting person was like, "Hey, this Gruber, he's he's not working these days, and I like him, so let's get him in, right?" And I walked in the door. This is in L.A. at some casting place there, and there was. Can you picture it, Hamda? Keith, you ready? Uh, there ready. was fifteen Grubers in there. Fifteen <laughs> Grubers, and it was hilarious because there's like, wow, there's skinnier Gruber, there's taller, which is hard. There's shorter Gruber, there's tie-dye Gruber, there's older, you know, glasses, bespectacled Gruber. It was kind of funny. And I go, wow, that is very trippy. That's so. awesome when actors have to go out for their type. So it's um, maybe you created yeah. that name. So um, we need a Gruber type and it's five different uh, people who are trying to look like you and you auditioning to the same thing. Exactly. Can I give you a, a funny story of how I did get the gig? And the guy who maybe should have got it did not. May I share it with you? Please. You know what? I am, first of all, I love I love how you embraced consent. You're not one of these people <laughs> stuck in the olden yeah. days. Right. <laughs> yes, please. By all means. Well, just this. I was on a show like younger listeners and you're on your team there mm -hmm. on Team Katz, Katziga. Katka, team, yep. team Katzka might know me from a Ned's Declassified. And that's really funny because Steve Bannis and I, who's Alan on your favorite show, have that right? It's Frank and Alan. He's Frank, rather. I'm Alan. So on love, right? That's Steve mm -hmm. Manos. And he was also Mr. Kaczewski in, um, in Freaks and Geeks, right? And he's done a million different things, right? He and I have both noticed that if we are recognized for what we did, um, it falls into two categories. If you're over 40, say, they'll go, hey, I saw you on Freaks and Geeks. You were really great. My high school was like that. And the ones that are younger will go, hey, I saw you on Nets Declassified. My school was just like that. So it's kind of funny. We got you know, a couple generations now working on how they recognize us. But here's, here's the quick Ned classified story is uh, they had a time when Ned, who's the, the main character and he's trying to negotiate uh, middle school, right? Navigate rather middle school. He had a, a moral decision. And so they, the writers had written an angel and a devil on his shoulders. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, they had written an angel and devil on the shoulders. And uh, Nickelodeon, of all people, said, oh, you know what? That's a little too religious. Can we not do that? And they're like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. And they go, no, just come up with something else. So they came up with Mark Fight as Benedict Arnold and Gruber as Lincoln. Okay. Kind of cool, right? Right. On his shoulder. So that was that. And then I reprised my role in an unseen episode, by the way, of SpongeBob SquarePants, where <laughs> Patchy the Pirate, I don't know that whole world, but Patchy the Pirate goes and he meets the Queen of England, right? Okay. And he meets Abraham Lincoln in some crazy <laughs> Patchy the Pirate version of, uh, of SpongeBob. And when I went to that audition at Nickelodeon, there was like five guys, I'm not kidding, with full tailcoat, top hats, beards, mole. The whole bit, and they're going, four score and seven years, you know, whatever. And then Gruber rolls in, just being Gruber, and they go, well, let's pick him. He looks like <laughs> Abe Lincoln. Let's make him. <laughs> so I won. I beat, out, I beat out actual Abe Lincoln, including the guy who uh, was from my left foot. Who was that guy? Holy shit. So, wow. It, it What's pays- his name? The Lincoln guy? What's his name? The Lincoln uh, guy. Oh, um, the actor. I know who you mean. The greatest actor of all time. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel, what's his head? Day-Lewis. Yeah, Daniel Day-Lewis. I think he was there that day, too. I'm not sure. He uh, he calls me Keith. Yeah, I know Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I have one more question. It's very specific about Gilmore Girls. How big is Stars Hollow, really? Because sometimes Lorelai needs a ride to work when her car is fucked up. And then sometimes <laughs> she walks 300 feet and she's at work. This one time she had to ride her bike and she was on the side of a mountain talking to Rory for like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> so I don't understand how big Stars Hollow is. And this is a two parter uh, with your permission. Uh, of course. How does how does Rory at 14 know Kierkegaard? You may begin. <laughs> Oh, my God. Good call there, brother. Good call. <laughs> Let's, start with the ge- Let's start with the geography, and then we're going to get to Kierkegaard if we may, okay? okay. All right. Here's the Stars Hollow, as you know, was shot on the Warner Brothers lot, or maybe you don't know that, but it's shot Everybody on the knows. Warner Brothers Everybody lot. Everybody knows that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's a pretty wide stretch from, like, uh, uh, the Luke Steiner to, oh, there's a house. There's the library. There's the whatever. And in fact, in the very last episode, for those who haven't seen it, you've got to watch the whole thing in the last episode. Am I right? Come on, people. Uh, duh, you see yeah. all the mus- all the musicians, including a Gruber playing an original song, followed by who? Marilyn Rice Cup. Why not? Why wouldn't she be on that scene? Because she was awesome. And right. then Grantley Phillips eventually and Sparks and all the other gang. But that was a big spread, as you remember. So when you're talking about biking, you know, riding a bike down from a mountain or driving a car, it's <laughs> It, it can be, here's what it is, Hamda. It's a zeny kind of thing. It's as big as you want it to be, oh, and it's as wow. small as you want it to be. Okay, just, just like my own mind. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and yes, I, I know that the person who, uh, who wrote it is such a huge music fan because she stuck music yeah. everywhere she could. Indeed. And that's kind of how I got there, by the way, for your listeners. I think this is third hand information. So I'm going to say you need a double fact check at some point. But Grantley Phillips was the first troubadour, right? Like the actual troubadour, an actual amazing songwriter and rocker and musician and, and, and great human being. I think they were looking for from the Largo music uh, kind of catalog, Richard Thompson, maybe. Does that sound right for the Gilmore Girls fans? They were looking for Richard Thomas, maybe John Bryan or somebody. And then when they came up short, they got Gruber. Why not? Gruber can sing. <laughs> He's not a play guitar. So I might have been third, fourth, fifth in line on that one from the Largo musicians. Probably John Bryan and Richard Thompson and the guys like that. So, Sometimes. And then to the turkey guard question, do we still well, have time for that one? Yeah, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you what first. Uh, yeah. What's that called when somebody asks a question but doesn't need the answer? Um, Rhetorical. Rhetorical. So at first it was rhetorical, but it seems you have an answer. What I was hoping for on, on the show sometime would be like, I remember uh, I was bullied in school when I was young, physically and uh, with words and just being picked on. So I mm-hmm. did the lamest thing and I got a joke book, an insult book, and I would have it under my desk, glance at it and then spit out this, uh, you know, this stupid one liner at the person. Nice. 
That's what I was hoping Rory would do one day. Like, look, by and you look down, read Kierkegaard yeah. and you learn, oh, you're a fake fuck. Of course, you don't know all these 1820 references. You don't have an opinion on Shakespeare. <laughs> but what's your, uh, what's your your what's your take? <laughs> just my take that um, unless you're a scholar and a philosopher, I don't think anybody knows Kierkegaard. So the fact that she's reading it, I'm not buying it, but I get it. It does sound good. It's got sort of that uh, Sunshine Boy K and G and D. It's got all the sort of jokey sounds of a, of a punchline, right? Kierkegaard, sure. right? <laughs> I'll just tell you this. Uh, and this is a spoiler alert for your listeners who might want to Oh, maybe you want to dip into a little jerky card, right? <laughs> uh, Danish philosopher. Someone said that he wore pantyhose. I don't know that he was a cross-dresser, but maybe that was just what they wore back then. It was a weird thing I remember from my schooling. My brother, who actually did study philosophy and paid attention, had a book on our home bookshelf when I was a kid um, that was called Fear and Trembling and the Sickness Unto Death. Okay. Fear and okay. trembling and the sickness unto death, okay? And you know what the sickness unto death is? Because I just had to ask my brother. I go, I'm never going to read this. Just tell me what the sickness unto death is. Mm -hmm. And you know what it is? I don't live in Stars Hollow. No, I don't. It's despair. Mm. So there you go. That makes sense. All right. You just saved want... yourself about, you know, <laughs> uh, 200 pages of some heavy philosophy. It's on the very last page. Despair. One more. <laughs> exactly. Did you get it right? It says. Oh, and then the very last word, Keith, it, it yes. says, by the way, the single son to death is despair, period. And then the very last word of the book, psych. What? <laughs> Why, right. would he, to be continued. Why would he do that? Yeah, he was an asshole. That's crazy. He was You've asshole. been character guarded. Yeah, they would say that. They would say that. All right. Let me mention this and then we'll get to some news with you, uh, if you please. Magic Spirit. Magic Spoon. I'm talking about cereal. How it was one of the best parts of uh, being a kid. Speaking about being a kid, but you got to give it up. Why? Because it's full of sugar. It's full of junk. You're not supposed to eat that stuff. You know that you got to cut down carbs, sugar, unhealthy food. All right. We're adults now, for Christ's sake. Well, I decided that no, I get there's got to be a way that I can eat cereal and not die. It's 2021, it's right? 2021. You can eat cereal, and not die. This should be the tagline <laughs> for Magic Spoon. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein four only four net grams of carbs in each serving. That's 140 calories a serving. Keto friendly. Wait, well, wait, free. whoa, whoa. Slow yeah. your roll there, Keith. Yeah. Four net, four net, four net grams. I think that means Dang. network grams. But you don't okay. have to be in Hollywood to enjoy it. Keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, GMO free. And a new super delicious flavor they have birthday cake. Mm. What <laughs> birthday cake cereal that doesn't kill you? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> It's going to be available in a special five pack for a limited time only. So get it while you can or build your own box. Available <laughs> flavors to build your very own custom bundles are cocoa. Get it? Cocoa. Mm. Fruity. Oh, frosted. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Tastes like the yummy, yummy. I don't know what I can and can't say, but you get it. <laughs> peanut butter, <laughs> cinnamon. Now, which one of those did I read? That'll kill you. Trick psych. None. <laughs> None will kill you. <laughs> so good. I have them. I eat them. And maybe you're in Canada going, OK, uh, can we get back to the show. I'm not in America. They ship to Canada now. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Go to magicspoon.com slash KTG. Grab the new limited edition birthday cake or a custom bundle of cereal. Try it today. Use promo code KTG at checkout. Save five dollars off your order. Offer is good in the US or Canada but only when you use the code at checkout. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash KTG. Use the code KTG. Save five bucks. All right, thank you, Magic hey, Keith. Spoon. Yeah. Hey, Keith. Yes, sir. Long time caller, hey. Long yeah. time caller, hey, from Edmonton, hey. Hey, right? how's it going? Yeah. Pip, pip. I've been enjoying your show across the border, eh? But uh, I bet I can't get I bet I can't get Magic Spoon up here in Edmonton, eh? Oh, you stupid motherfucker. It is now what? available, you deaf son of a bitch, in Canada. 
Magic spoon for your enjoyment. GMO free, keto free. Everything oh that applied to the American version is the Canadian version because it's the same thing. It's just <laughs> as good. It's not a knockoff. I hope it has French on one side of the box and English on the other side, though. That's all I'm saying. Dude, I thought I was saying things I couldn't say. Easy there. Anyway, it's <laughs> magic spoon. Dot com slash KTG and the code is KTG. Say five bucks. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. All right. Let's get to you some know what news. They should, yes. What yeah, should they before do? you do the news, I just have yeah, yeah. to mention, won't you? And I'm not going to sing it because, again, with the uh, with the thing. Who knows uh, the rules, won't right? You take, won't you take a ride on the flying spoon? I think is from the John. Uh, what's it said? Creedence Clearwater Revival. But I kind of like Magic Spoon better. So can I just say this now without having not tried it yet? Yeah, I think Magic Spoon is better than an old Creedence Clearwater song. There you're you go. Not, you're not wrong, because it's funny you say that. I had a CCR album and I'm chewing on it, right? Long story right? short, I'm in the hospital. <laughs> no, Magic Spoon With is the... With a perforated esophagus saying, right. this isn't that good. All right. Can we get out of here before uh, I get fired? Let's All right. <laughs> here's, some, uh, here's some news. The big news is as of recording this, the Derek Chauvin um, judgment is uh, is going on right now. And these judges, by the way, just like when I we are waiting for So it's the sentencing. But just when, when we were waiting to find out if he was guilty or not guilty, these judges, are they going for TV time? Like he knows the answer. I, I understand bringing up for it's more for us bringing up. Um, uh, oh, oh, Christ, don't tell me his name's not coming to me. Uh, George who, Floyd. George Floyd. Thank you. George okay. Floyd's daughter came uh, came in, uh, you know, gave a tear jerking thing, which, you know, probably wasn't good for Derek Chauvin. You know, uh, she's not saying it won't bring him back. So let's forget the whole thing. <laughs> so, but I do understand that point. But other than that, they really drag this on. Like, just give us the answer. How many years is he staying? It, and it looks like it's going to be 25, perhaps even 30, which, you know, good, I guess. How are they guessing that stuff? If it's not, I just tried to update to see if there was one. How do you know they golf together? The, the lawyers golf <laughs> together. They got an inkling. Mm. They, they're always I think close. part of it. Part of it is also there's probably standard sentencing guidelines for whatever the exact nature of those crimes were. And right. then there's aggravating circumstances. So in other words, it could go from X to X plus five to X plus 10 based on the aggravating circumstances. So. Well, here's this. But, this is the yeah. I don't know if the word is pleased me, but uh, hours before the sentencing today, uh, Derek Chauvin tried for a new trial and it was dismissed. Oh, brother, that can't look good. Wow. You have to you have to show, mm -hmm. you know, you're sorry. Uh, you know, you're said the, the judge. We know this from, the, you know, real life TV. The, <laughs> the judge likes to see a little sorry in your face. Now yeah. you have right. a mask on because of COVID. And, you you know, I, I think this asshole probably I don't know if he's wearing one or not, uh, but it looks like he's not by a by a picture I'm seeing right now. Uh, but it doesn't look good when you go. Yeah, I should have a different trial because it wasn't fair because of this reason. Oh, we're not going to. Now yeah. we're going to judge you. Oh, well, then I learned my lesson. It's just <laughs> ignore that. Did my lawyer do that? What an asshole. Do you do you think that there's going to be any kind of rioting or anything once the. Uh... If it's Sentence. too low, I think so. If it's too low, you don't think that him going to jail will cause a riot on the other side? No, hmm. I don't. I don't. There's no there's no. It doesn't seem like there's another side to this as as meaning uh, Blue Lives Matter, that bullshit. Yeah, uh, yeah. everybody seems here? to be going. Not the way I'm seeing. Hmm. I, what do you what do you think, uh, Dave? But I, I seem to be seeing well, you like, know what? Everybody thinks it's fucking disgusting. Um, I just want to go back to a quick thing of what you said about how one comports themselves in, in the sentencing, you know, appearance in the sentencing yeah. phase right now is uh, some of the uh, January 6th insurgents people like there's a lady yesterday who's like, oh, okay, I'm really sorry. I, I probably shouldn't have done that. And then there's some guys who are just fucking assholes and they're just going, no, I'm glad I did it. And here's a picture of me doing it. So it's right. like, I'm going to go back to Keith's thing and say, man, if ever there was a time when you and your defense might want to get together and say, yeah, you know what? It's for, it's for real. You are guilty. You're a murderer. So let's figure out how we can approach this as opposed to new trial. Yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm simply going to say, I think I agree with that. Then, yeah. 
Yeah, all his all his three charges, just to remind you, second degree unintentional murder. That's what that was, mm -hmm. a felony that could cause death. Third degree murder, uh, a dangerous act. Uh, second degree manslaughter, unreasonable risk. They all sound right. the same to me for being different numbers. But the point is, the judge is going to, you know, give you a sentence based on you didn't mean to kill somebody. But what you did was real, real bad. And here you are saying, yeah. I don't think it's even that. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're a fucking psychopath, so maybe right. it's even worse. Yeah, I don't think that was a good idea. That's my two cents. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. So I'll, I'll keep uh, I'll keep refreshing and seeing uh, he's 45 years old. If you're curious. Of course, uh, this was a year ago, May 25th, 2020, uh, the murder. Uh, I'll let you know what happens if uh, we make it during this show. Do you I think and this is going to be a very crass question. Do you think he'll kill himself? 25 years is a long time. I don't know. I don't know. It seems everybody's uh, hanging themselves in prison now. Epstein, whatever you think. This uh, McAfee, the guy that did the software, I didn't. Uh, apparently it was like extreme tax evasion that he's in trouble. He was in trouble in Spain. Extra. I know I'm talking fast. He was in trouble in Spain, extradited to America before he got to America. He's hanging in a cell. Uh, I don't like I don't know about the tax evasion, but uh, I don't like him because I think these uh, these anti um, virus virus. I think they make their own fucking viruses. <laughs> and I don't think I'm being paranoid. <laughs> I think they make the fucking virus. They go, oh, here's a new worm uh, that we fight. Yeah, where is it? Uh, you'll see. Yeah, I heard about the McAfee thing and, and it did make me think of Epstein. And and this guy has so much anger, but. I don't know. I wonder if that anger turns inward or, you know, he's just kind of like tries to find some other person to put it on. Right. It's not going to be good. Like, how do you go from being so free? Like, not only are you so free, you're the boss, you're the boss yeah. of the streets. Yeah. yeah, you're the authority. And in your mind, you can get away with something as bad as this. You're like surprised that you're in this mess, which means this isn't the first time. It can't be the first time. So you were ruler of the universe and now you're put in a cage. I don't know how someone can handle that who doesn't know how to handle anything. So right. murdered in front of a camera like uh, these aren't decision making skills that will help you in jail. Well, if he okay, get, he'll, he'll go. Uh, yeah, he's definitely going to go to jail uh, for a time. Uh, will he kill himself? Dave Gruber. Uh, you know what? I can't really speak to that. I don't know. I don't know. Hemda, okay. you said that it was a crass question. And, and sometimes I don't think crass questions are unaskable. I think it's completely OK to ask. But I can honestly say I don't know how to how to respond to that. Yeah, right? I don't know either. I don't know either. It's just a thought yeah. because yeah. because things like this have happened recently. And um, but then again, like Cosby is sitting there and because he sort of tends to have more of this Chauvin attitude, which is what did I do? Right. So maybe the what did I do? People are not uh, turning themselves in personally, so to speak. And maybe like Cosby, Cosby, for example, didn't get out of didn't get uh, parole uh, or it wasn't even looked at. Would he get parole uh, because he wouldn't go to classes? to uh to, to teach him why you shouldn't rape too much because he still thinks he's a good person. And so does Chauvin. But he knows what he did. He knows. Right. We all know that. I, don't, I feel let's... like people can convince themselves that they are fantastic. And these these women should allow them to do that. Or these human beings don't count. Right. Well, so what we... did I do if these if, if women don't count or black people don't count or whoever you see these these lesser people don't count, then what did I do really? Well, my point is that I'm pleased, whatever the reason that uh, Cosby doesn't go to these schools. And so now he'll have to fill out his full term. Chauvin, uh, if he keeps which it looks like he is, keeps trying to uh, not admit any wrongdoing. He'll, he'll serve the uh, full time. That pleases me. This just in. He is sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison. Wow. Yep. So we'll see. That is that is brand new news. Then there you go. Yeah. Wow. Breaking, okay. breaking news. Uh, you saw perhaps that uh, Rudy Giuliani has been temporarily banned, perhaps soon permanently, because the uh, judges are debating it, uh, banned from being a lawyer. And uh, it's because he's disbarred he kept, in New York. He's disbarred. He's disbarred, uh, period. But yes, in New York. 
a panel of uh, Manhattan judges suspended Giuliani's license to practice law in New York, uh, ruling that he has betrayed his uh, professional oath by peddling false misleading claims about the 2020 election on behalf of uh, Donald Trump. I picture this guy's now he's, he's going to be the new Billy Bush. Like, but why can Trump do it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see why he's different. Why is it different? <laughs> He's not a lawyer. Is that he? sounded that what? sounded a little bit like later three stooges. That sounded yeah. like I don't know, hurt him. That's like <laughs> Joe Dorita. I don't get it. Uh, the temporary hey. suspension, which could become permanent within weeks, was warranted because Giuliani poses a quote immediate threat to the public, and that he continues to push the thoroughly uh, debunked falsehood. Excuse me, that uh, Democrats stole the election from Trump. Well, actually, I saw some of these where he would go into courts. You know, I, I know Georgia was one, I believe well, there were definitely multiple. And he, he you know, and he's outside and he's like, you know, talking to the press. Yeah. And we're going to fight this. And, you know, Trump's paying me and I'm here to say uh, this election bullshit. He gets into the court and that's uh, that's shown on like C-SPAN seven. So nobody's really watching it. But they go, hey, you know, <laughs> this is bullshit. Right. And he, he's like, yeah, I guess there's nothing. OK, well, I, you know, I had to come here to get paid. And they're like, all right, get the fuck out of here. He didn't know it'd come and bite him in the ass. <laughs> Can I make a point to uh, to try and even attach the Derek Chauvin trial sure. to uh, the current news of Rudy being just barred? Um, it's this. I did watch, and I love C-SPAN 7. It's one of my favorites. It's Those good. are the subcommittees. <laughs> because C-SPAN 3, you'll get the real America, and you get some uh, some lectures in history. But C-SPAN right. 7, it, that's, that's the deep dive. But I did watch uh, as much as I could of the trial, right? And so I was amazed. I even called my brother, the lawyer, and told him, I go, man, I have a new respect for the language of law, the protocol of law, and just trying to get to the truth. Right. I was, mm -hmm. I was serious. I actually called up my brother. I go, dude, now I get you a little better. He's my older brother. He's a professor and a, uh, and a lawyer himself. So I'm just kind of marveling at, oh, when law is done well, and like the prophet Amos says, and righteousness flows down like, like running waters, you know, it's like, then it's good. It's a good thing, right? Sure. Um, and so it's kind of funny to me. Oh, and also, this is where I'm going with this, with the Rudy Giuliani. But also, you know, we all, maybe you two know some of lawyer jokes. And, oh, uh, what do you call the lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? A good sure. start or whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah. All the lawyer jokes. And I go, it's kind of funny to me. And I'm so happy that Rudy Giuliani is now barred from being a punchline. He can't even be a punchline. <laughs> That's how bad he is. <laughs> right? Way, you got to yes. know you're bad when you can't even get a punchline to, right. you know. He's like, what, oh, do they, what do they call me on the bottom of the ocean? It's like, Rudy, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They call you Mr. Giuliani. Shit. That's it. I can't even be a scumbag. Uh, right? the not judge, even. Right. The judges said Giuliani... Uh, let's see here. The uh, judges said, quote, the reputation of the entire legal profession uh, was tarnished by telling his election lies before courts, lawmakers and the public. He also said his actions, quote, directly inflamed the tensions that resulted in the deadly January 6th attack at the Capitol. The seriousness of the respondents. Wow. I love this. That's serious, huge. Yeah. The seriousness of respondents uncontroverted misconduct cannot be overstated. This country is being torn apart by continued attacks on the legitimacy of the 2020 election and of our current president, Joseph uh, R. Biden. Ooh, entire government names. Yes. One only has to look Love at it. the ongoing uh, present public discord over the 2020 election, which erupted uh, with violence, insurrection, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> what did we think 2020 would be like? Could we read news that says insurrection, blah, 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 <laughs> you know during that. a pandemic, <laughs> after the riots? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> remember <laughs> lockdown, people? You remember that? Remember when we thought we would have to survive and we took all the toilet paper away from each other? Because that is exactly how we react when oh we're. Oh, my America. God. Remember that? OK. Uh, nice job, everyone. Right. They brought they up. A uh, that's yeah. It, I think it's time for another Billy Joel. We didn't start the fire part two. <laughs> right. All those things, all those things you named off. It's like, man, it's a, he can write another one. Come on, Billy. Oh, I that's think, a good idea. I think he started and just started crying and then <laughs> just picked up the paper. Like it used to be JFK and Coca-Cola Wars. What the <laughs> right. f is going on now? 
too much. So you're saying Billy sat down. Billy sat down at a Steinway, right? He had a right. pencil out and he goes, uh, "Insurrection, pandemic," <laughs> and then he just started weeping. You're yeah, saying? he's like nobody's gonna sing weeping? along. To, yeah, nobody's gonna sing along to this. This you isn't something cute oh. like China martial law. You know. You know, right. we, have on, we have. I think we should start a thread. A thread on Reddit on what we can put in a new sort of Billy Joel version of this song and put out the challenge to be Jason who has written parody songs for this show that that rival like any other parody songstress ever that we've heard. And I think he can write the next. We didn't start the fire. Uh, the public record submitted on this motion unequivocally. Oh, sorry. I missed this. Some I wanted to read to you right here uh, in Pennsylvania federal court. Uh, they bring up. I second Drew- the motion, by the way, Hemna, I second the motion <laughs> and all in favor say aye, aye. Oh, aye, aye, aye. All those, aye, opposed, aye. By the, all those aye. opposed by the same sign. Uh, motion passes. Way to go. Aye. Yes. Oh, I. Oh, you know, I don't think that my mother knew that I can do it, but I knew if I had clarity and uh, the right words that I would get my motions passed. Thank you. It's it's really an honor <laughs> to be here, and I'm I'm just grateful to have been heard. Thank you. I, I didn't mean to and be I rude. I assumed the, I it was understood. I reserve the rest of my time to Keith, the senator from uh, from <laughs> where do you live, Keith? Uh, New York. What does it mean? Uh, Apple. No, then I, then I I was gonna yeah. Then I say I uh, I defer the rest of my time to the good senator from New York, Keith. Thank you. Uh, it's one of the things they brought up about the Giuliani's quote misconduct was including uh, unfounded arguments before a Pennsylvania federal court that thousands of dead people voted illegally for Biden in Philadelphia, which I have heard people say. Uh, right. They say the public uh, record submitted on this motion. On a, it's a funny you have to use big words, though, because it is an important job. You are a judge. You know, you can't go. What the fuck? Yeah. You can't go <laughs> bullshit. You have to say, well, the public record submitted on this uh, motion unequivocally show that the respondent statement is indeed false. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, it's a lot easier. It. It was... Go ahead. It's, it's a lot easier to just go. Ah, wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> Giuliani I like was the, the game show buzzer. The yeah. game show buzzer, Ron. <laughs> they misread the uh, they misread the thing though. It's actually dead heads voted for Joe Biden because they're <laughs> leftists. They're yes. hippie leftists. <laughs> <laughs> that got uh, that got messed up by a game of telephone. I'm on, just saying. Yeah, on spe- C-SPAN seven. You know, C-SPAN six. A lot of way. fish Soccer. fans. A lot of fish fans also probably voted for Biden. I'm guessing. Right. right? Uh, Giuliani, of course, uh, served as the top federal prosecutor in Manhattan, gained a reputation as a tough talking mob buster before being elected in 93 as the first Republican mayor of New York in uh, nearly two decades. See what we did, New York? See that? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> in addition, Let them to now- in. they're just Republican. Right. In addition to now being barred from practicing law, he's facing several civil lawsuits against his alleged role, including the Capitol riot. He also remains under federal Mm -hmm. investigation over allegations that he violated foreign lobbying laws while helping Trump dig for uh, political dirt on Biden's family in the Ukraine in 2019. Oh, that's not done. That's not over. That investigation is being conducted by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan. That's where Giuliani went. He was boss there. Hey, hey, he knows knows all the phone numbers still. This is (laughs) huge. Yeah, it's a big deal. This is and I think it'll lead to even bigger historical events because you're now digging through his shit. And he was the lawyer for a president who's we haven't found the proof to go. Come come on. He's an are we looking at this? What's the law here that was broken? And it was nothing so far. But I feel like this will uncover something. You know, maybe I'm just too optimistic. What do you think? Dave, do you fuck around on social media? Do you see what everybody complains about or you don't mess with that? You know better. You know what? I I don't mess with it because it's too much work, right? You really got to get in there and whatnot. Um, I'll tell you this. Like, here's here's how I'll hear about something. It's like Josh Weinstein, right? J. Elvis Weinstein, who I've known since Mr. Science Theater days way back then. Um, I'll just call him up once in a while and say, hey, Josh, would you please read me your tweets? Right? (laughs) Right. I'm not going to read him. So he'll do it. He'll do like, a, you know, talking book version of his tweets. Right. Or my friend Steve Vanos, Mr. Kaczewski, him and my friend Lupe Carranza. These are L.A. people. 
they'll send me the Facebook post about Giuliani being a dick and, you know, whatever. So I, I'm in tune secondhand. You know what I'm saying? It's usually just like the lag time in our Zoom calls, you guys. I'm right, always a little practice. bit behind. Right. Yeah. Do you, will, but like so, your friends yeah, say, so that's what it is. Will your, will your friend say, hey, I uh, and then I got a death threat for that one. And you're like, no, 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 no. I just came for the original. That's your business. You're the one messing around. Uh, quick I think news. death threats are a, are a big fat drag, man. I just think they really are. Drag. Bummer. Yeah, we've had some. They really they really can uh, bum me out a bit. It's so it's so absurd because you just go either way. This person, right, who is a fucking asshole is being an asshole. And then if it's real, that's super fucked up. And if it's like not real, you're like, okay, that's just, you're a nut and please get out of my world. So either way, I think either way, it feels like, it feels like people um, who respond that big are, are thinking they're on TV. You know what I mean? Like when, when people respond to these, big events on TV, they have time to throw out like, I knew I shouldn't have woke up. I got out of bed this morning. There's a helicopter flying at you. You start running. But in TV, they have time to go, I will destroy you with every moment. I'd like, no, you have to go to the bathroom and make food. There's not every moment to destroy me. But I feel like those big moments, that's the only way that they can feel better about the next step of what's going to happen, how justice yeah. can happen. But at the same time, and I don't want to reward bad behavior, but if you put 10 of these assholes in a room and I watch them on TV, I'd be there, uh, I'd be there live. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. You'd be there know. in real time. Yeah, <laughs> live I, I, tweeting. <laughs> I'd, be into it. I'd be tweeting about the show. The irony. He'd personally call Dave and be like, yeah. check this out. Here's exactly what I'm watching. <laughs> Here's what I'm working on. And I have to read the responses. It's important. Uh, one last uh, quick it. Quick news segment here. Uh, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene had argued that paying for contraception amounted to abortion. So contraception (laughs) shouldn't be free for women, even though, of course, contraceptive drugs do not induce abortions. It's funny that I feel I have to tell people that. But uh, but let's look at the other side. Okay, she just learned about the Holocaust. (laughs) It's been a busy fucking week. Let's all calm down a minute and give the woman a break. (laughs) <laughs> right. So go to a doctor's office next week. <laughs> Just learned about one right. of the worst atrocities in our lifetime. <laughs> Some of our lifetimes, oh. your lifetime, Dave, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. uh, Dave Gruber Allen. Uh, what what should people know about you that I haven't uh, that I haven't mentioned? What could what can we are we looking forward to anything? How are you holding up uh, after this uh, lockdown? <laughs> I'm I'm holding up pretty good. Thank you for asking and all that. I think I'm pretty open uh, with my friends and stuff, but to your listeners who may not have met me and to you folks who I just met right now, um, I'm, I'm just happy to be alive. I'm happy to have the, the, uh, the time I've had in a career. I like to think that I've been retired. This is my new joke, by the way, because when I moved up to Utah, it's like not a lot of work up in Utah. And then it became even less. Um, let's put it this way. When Kevin Costner is moving, Yellowstone out of Utah to get better tax incentives in Wyoming where (laughs) Yellowstone takes place. I get it. It's kind of like, wow, there goes my role as prospector. I was all bummed out. You know, I said, I was just waiting for, you know, season two, there's gotta be a prospector, right? Come on, I'll have a role, but nah. So no, I've been super fortunate y'all. And again, with people like you, Hemden and Keith, man, looking out for me, like I'm so glad to be part of your scene today. And then, from the very beginning with the Higgins boys in Des Moines, right? Des Moines, Iowa, Mm -hmm. my friends always looking out for me. And then here's the thing. I would say this kind of advice for living, just have fun with your friends, man, and make new friends and be open to new friends and keep your old friends and that kind of Girl Scout motto stuff. Right. But just go, Hey, if you get paid for doing what you do, that's cool. If not, it can be an avocation, right? You can say, you know what? Oh, here's, here's something that's out of nowhere, but I just thought I better share it now. Every, uh, and then there's Keith, you have a guitar up there. You play, yeah? You're a player. Here's the thing. I own a guitar and, okay. and I had a task rabbit person, uh, put stuff on my walk and, uh, you know, nowadays you don't have to be a manly man. So that's the most beautiful thing in the world. Fluidness. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, they, they hung up my guitar 
And oh, okay. then because of the pandemic, me and Kenda left our studios and record separately from our houses. Right, and now right. The guitar happens to be stuck there. And now I got to answer guitar questions for life. <laughs> oh, this is the only place so in my sorry. apartment my studio fits. <laughs> oh, my God. We got to yeah. get another well, task rabbit out there because that cannot be your guitar story. I got to hang up something that I do. What do I do? No, you either start learning the guitar or a new task rabbit, and we should put a date on this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what could I, I'll hang a router from there or something. I don't know. I'll think. <laughs> I'll think. Uh, oh, his, goodness. his name, of course, is Dave Gruber Allen, and uh, he's 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 been in so much stuff that you've seen. And it is very, uh, very nice to meet you. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And in fact, hey. because he's not necessarily going to be following the social media, follow us on social media and we will call him to read anything you say about him. Yes. Even, <laughs> murder. Even, Even murder. murder. Like if you write, hey, do you want to die? He doesn't find almost any question too crass. <laughs> and we'll right. get to the bottom of it. So follow at Keith and, and can Girl. I say, Yes. Can I say, Hamda and Keith, with my appreciation for your time and your patience with me, um, if anyone says, oh, I, I recognize that guy, can he show me the way to Mordor? Tell him I do not know how to get to Mordor, right. uh, except for the Led Zeppelin song, because I've not read uh, Lord of the Rings or uh, The Hobbit. All right? So. And, uh, or Harry Potter, right, Gandalf? Or Harry Potter. Exactly. Right. right. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank, I, I, thank you I like so much, you guys. Thank you. I like that we have pre-canned answers. Follow us at Keith and the Girls so we could tell Dave Gruber Allen all of your thoughts. And don't forget to get your KTG gear at KATG.com slash gear. G-E-A-R. We'll see you. And at gear Starzone. means cool in Britain. Gear means cool in Britain. That's one way to remember it. Yeah, that's that is a better ending. I, I think I, I think I can spell it. You know. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Keith and the girl.com.